Here are 30 things you did not know about Anno 1800. 1. Set fire stations at all places, including factories, and don't forget oil production. You can see the risk associated with not doing that, and once it's critical, you can expect fires or even explosions, which can be easily prevented and they don't cost all that much. 2. Protect all sides of your island. You can build at each beach that is connected to your island. That's also very handy for making fisheries, because they always take up a lot of space and you could also just move them to that side of the island you don't want to use. But if you do, just remember to put down a turret or two, because they are usually placed pretty good and they can shoot pirates when they decide to visit. 3. The islands on the New World aren't all that big and have rivers all through them. So to optimize space, just make a wood production island close by and there are plenty of small islands to choose from. 4. You can build roads over train tracks, but only one tile, so not two next to each other. But this can be more than enough if your train track is placed in between buildings or roads and don't want to move everything again. As long as the production building is connected with at least one tile of road, that's all you need. 5. You can set minimum amounts of resources in your trading posts. This is very handy for your trade routes since they'll otherwise grab everything eventually, leaving your main island without essential resources. When you set the minimum, that won't happen. 6. If you're figuring out where to place a trade union, all the buildings that light up blue will be in the influence, so you don't have to guess. 7. You can use the upgrade tool to mass upgrade buildings, but also repair en masse for if there are a lot of abandoned houses, from fire, disease or lack of resources. Sadly, you cannot mass upgrade roads, but if you lock onto a building next to it, it will select all the roads around it. Do that a few times and it will save you a lot of time. 8. Make use of the Move tool. You can select everything including roads and move your industry late game. You don't have to move everything individually, just select it in bulk and rearrange where necessary. 9. You can angle the camera in NO1800 if you're starting a new game. In this way, you can see the mountains of the islands first and know where you'll need to explore before sending out the ship. And when you do, just mark multiple locations while holding RB on Xbox, L1 on PS5 or Shift on PC and then selecting where to go. It will cross off these locations one after the other so you don't have to click a new position every few minutes. Just watch out for the cannons of the pirates as they'll wreck your ship pretty fast. Ten. Citizen quests will sometimes ask you to find stuff. You'll need to find cows, pigs, rioters or other figures in between your citizens and click on them. That's it. Just set the speed of the game to max and wait until you see something out of the ordinary. 11. Don't have ships yet? You can charter routes but it will cost 50 income and some influence. But they will replace itself once they are destroyed, so that won't cost you anything. It can be handy sometimes for small routes. 12. Do you feel like the building process of your city can be overwhelming too? Just make a small block the way you want and use the copy tool to paste it anywhere you want. The parts that show up in red will not be built, so you can even paste it in the corners and still have the whole island filled up. 13. The public mooring building gives you 3.6 coins per attractiveness level on your island at an artisan stage. It costs 400 maintenance, so you'll need 112 attractiveness at a minimum to break even. After that, it's all profit. Keep an eye on your attractiveness level or rebuild your industry on another island to make sure your main island is more attractive. 14. Everything goes perfectly fine until it doesn't. Ever wondered why that is? Well, 9 out of 10 times it has something to do with your resources provided to these citizens. Every resource provided will give you some income per citizen. And when the storage runs dry, that income will be lost all of a sudden. So check your trade routes and see if you have too many resources selected per route. Most of the time, you'll find out that one resource has overwhelmed the ship and it can no longer pick up the second. Oh, and keep an eye out on the newspaper as well it will automatically publish the worst outcome, affecting the income too. So make sure you'll publish some propaganda when needed. 15. You can sell shares you've acquired, but it will sell them to the queen instead of the AI player. At a much lower rate, 
than the rate you've bought it for though. But at least you'll get some quick cash. It would be prudent to accept. 16. Some AI players won't mind if you buy shares, even though they will buy them back relatively quickly, at least you'll have the benefit of a big income for a certain amount of time, without the negative consequences. You can afford to tussle for my island, perhaps I underestimated you. 17. If you ever select the island options when you're setting up your trade routes and select wait for goods or wait to unload, know that they will queue up all the ships until the resource has become available again, or when there is enough space to unload, which is fine if your route is set up for that, but it will mean a lot of delay if it's not. 18. Some items will let you replace certain requirements in the production buildings using the trade union. This is absolutely essential if you want to optimize everything, because eventually this will mean a lot of trade routes will be obsolete. For example, the need of cotton, the need for flour or even the need for cement. 19. Not happy with all the items the AI has to offer? Just re-roll them. It will cost 5,000 coins and the price will increase with yet another 5,000 for each time you re-roll. But at least you'll have the item you want. 20. The amount of storage available on your island isn't decided by how many warehouses you have, but by which level your trade post is. You can also build depots to increase the capacity, but it will take up valuable harbor space. 21. If you send ships to the new world after you've discovered it with an expedition, without colonizing a new island first, the ship you'll send will stop at a random location in a new world, even if you colonize a new island right after. So this might be the reason you've lost your ship, or the pirates got to it first. 22. Flowsome will be available for pickup for around 15 in-game minutes. So be sure to grab the things you need before the timer runs out. Pirates will drop a lot of valuable loot, including guns, precious resources, or general items. So always make sure to grab everything. 23. It's easier to buy steel at first than to produce it yourself. Producing steel will cost a lot of income at the start of the game. And if you want to colonize a new island, you will need some as fast as possible. So just buy some if you can afford it. If you cannot afford it yet, just overproduce soap and sell that to Eli Bleakworth. Soap is much easier and less costly to produce. In this way, you will still have the edge without the negative income. 24. Decide whether or not you want to have resources available to citizens. For example, if you give rum to joneleros or obreros, you will get much less return than if you were to deliver that same resource to your artisans or engineers in the old world. Especially if you want all of the money, this can add up really quick. And if you lack the production to provide everything to everyone, it can be handy just to block that consumption on the new world first. 25. Though pollution exists and it will cost you attractiveness points on your island, it's not vicinity based, it's island wide. So it doesn't matter if you put factories next to your houses or the middle of some beautiful nature on your island. 26. Electricity still works when you only have dirt roads, but like everything, the dirt roads have less range than paved roads. So upgrade to paved roads as soon as possible to increase the range of electricity, warehouses, and even buildings like fire stations. 27. When setting up an expedition, you'll find out that morale is even more important than ever. This has to do with the type of ship, because they all have base stats. For example, the frigate has 20 naval power and 10 navigation, while the schooner only has 20 navigation. Additionally, you can increase the morale with items and resources, like champagne, rum, chocolate, cigars, sausages, food in general, or even dynamite and soap all with different effects. 28. You can adjust the resources you'll see at the top menus. This can be handy to have a quick look at all the most essential resources, or specific ones if you're on a production island. You can choose these per island too. 29. Military ships can behave differently depending on their stance. Hover over the icon of the ship in its interface to see which stance is the active one. There are three stances. Active defense. The ship will seek, attack and pursue enemy targets until they leave the area, then return to its initial position. Passive defense. 
The ship will only attack enemy targets within its attack range and will return to its initial position once they all leave the area. And finally, all out attack. The ship will seek, attack and pursue any target for as long as it can. 30. You can turn off pirates altogether if you hate them. If you make a new custom game, you can select which AI players you want or don't select them at all. If you don't want to focus on the war and diplomacy aspect of the game and just make beautiful cities. And if that wasn't enough, you can also click on one of these videos to learn even more about Anno 1800. So choose one and I'll see you there.